Hezekiah's background. Greetings, dear friends. I am Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah. My story begins in a time of great turmoil and spiritual crisis. My father, Ahaz, was an idolatrous king, leading our people away from the worship of the one true God. He introduced practices that desecrated our sacred temple and brought foreign idols into our midst. It was a dark time, but even in my youth, I felt a deep calling to restore our kingdom to the ways of the Lord. The political landscape was equally challenging. The northern kingdom of Israel had fallen to the Assyrians, and our small kingdom of Judah was constantly under threat. Surrounded by powerful enemies, we were a tiny nation clinging to our faith and heritage. Could we withstand these threats? Could we turn back to God and find strength in our spiritual roots? These questions haunted me as I prepared to ascend the throne. Religious reforms. The moment the crown was placed upon my head, a heavy weight settled on my shoulders. It wasn't just the responsibility of ruling, but the sorry state of our kingdom. The most painful sight was the temple, once a beacon of faith, now standing like a broken heart. Walls were cracked, weeds sprouted through the courtyard, and the air hung heavy with neglect. Idols, like grotesque statues with mocking smiles, had replaced the sacred vessels. Altars meant for offerings to Yahweh lay cold and forgotten. Some even repurposed for strange and unsettling rituals. I couldn't bear it any longer. With a fire in my belly, I summoned the priests and Levites, the backbone of our faith. Their faces, once radiant with devotion, were etched with sadness and fear. I saw myself reflected in their eyes, a kingdom that had strayed far from its path. My voice boomed through the dusty halls. This ends today. We will cleanse the temple, stone by stone, until it shines brighter than the midday sun. We will banish these false gods and their twisted ways. The people, hesitant at first, felt a spark ignite within them. Together we formed a human chain, passing broken idols hand over hand, until a towering pile reached the central square. There, with a mighty roar, we watched them crumble to dust. It was a powerful symbol, the shattering of the chains that had bound us to false worship. But cleansing wasn't enough. We needed to rebuild not just the temple, but the hearts of our people. We searched for the forgotten scrolls, the ancient texts that held the wisdom of our ancestors. Slowly, painstakingly, we pieced together the forgotten rituals, the proper offerings, the beautiful songs of praise to Yahweh. The once scattered priests and Levites were brought back, their eyes filled with hope. We trained them, reminding them of their sacred duties. Slowly the rhythmic chanting of prayers and the melodic clanging of instruments filled the temple once more. The sweet smoke of incense rose, mingling with the aroma of freshly baked bread for sacrifices. And then came the day we'd all been waiting for, Passover. We didn't just celebrate within the walls of Judah. Messengers were sent far and wide, inviting the scattered remnants of Israel it was a joyous reunion, a sea of faces, young and old, etched with the same yearning for a return to God. We feasted together, sang the psalms, and remembered the night when our ancestors were freed from slavery. The temple echoed with laughter, tears, and the collective sigh of a nation finally coming home to its faith. Now I ask you, dear reader, can such a revival happen again? Can a nation, lost in its ways, find its way back to its spiritual roots? I believe it can, just as a single ember can ignite a roaring fire, a single act of faith, a single voice calling for change, can spark a transformation. The journey might be long, but the reward, a nation united in faith, hope, 
and love is worth every step, a Syrian threat. Even as we were celebrating our renewed faith, a dark shadow loomed on the horizon. The mighty Assyrian Empire had already conquered the Northern Kingdom, and now their eyes turned toward Judah. The threat was imminent and terrifying. Their king, Sennacherib, was ruthless, and his army was formidable. How could our small kingdom stand against such a powerful enemy? Initially, I tried diplomacy. We paid a heavy tribute to the Assyrians, hoping to buy some peace. The treasury was drained, and we stripped gold from the temple doors to meet their demands. But it was never enough. The Assyrians demanded total submission, and their envoys brought messages of intimidation and blasphemy. They mocked our faith, taunting us by saying that no god had ever saved any nation from their might. Could we trust in the Lord to deliver us when so many others had fallen? The people were scared, and doubt began to creep in. Sennacherib's army marched toward Jerusalem, laying siege to our city. They surrounded us, cutting off our supplies, and attempting to break our spirit with psychological warfare. Their commanders stood before our walls, shouting insults and threats, trying to turn the people against me. They claimed that our God was no different from the gods of the nations they had already defeated. In the face of such overwhelming power and arrogance, what could we do? How could we stand firm in our faith and not succumb to fear? Despair hung heavy in the air like a thick fog. News of the approaching Assyrian army, vast and merciless, spread fear like wildfire. The once vibrant streets of Jerusalem were choked with worried whispers and frantic prayers. My heart pounded against my ribs like a trapped bird. Taking a deep breath, I sought solace in the temple. Dust motes danced in the pale light filtering through the stained glass windows as I unfurled the Assyrian scrolls. The words burned into my eyes, threats, insults, and a chilling promise of destruction. Tears welled up, blurring the mocking script. In a choked voice, I spread the letters before the holy altar, my plea echoing through the vast hall. Lord, I cried, See the arrogance of these men. Will you allow them to defile your holy city? We are but a speck of dust before their might. Yet you are our shield and our hope. Save us, O Lord. Just as despair threatened to consume me completely, a familiar voice cut through the heavy silence. It was Isaiah, the prophet, his eyes filled with a strange light, hope like a fragile flower pushing through cracked pavement bloomed in my chest. The Lord has heard your prayers, King Hezekiah. Isaiah boomed, his voice filled with conviction. He will not forsake Jerusalem. Sennacherib, the Assyrian king, will not set foot within our walls, nor will he loose a single arrow against the city. The Lord himself will be our defender. His words were a balm to my weary soul. Yet a part of me remained unsettled. How could a single city withstand the might of an empire? But as doubt threatened to creep back in, a profound sense of peace washed over me. I clung to Isaiah's prophecy, a lifeline in the churning sea of fear. Then came the night that defied explanation. An unsettling quiet descended upon the city, broken only by the distant cries of owls. Sleep evaded me, and I paced the palace halls, my heart heavy with anticipation. As dawn painted the sky with hues of orange and pink, I received news that sent shivers down my spine. The Assyrian camp was eerily silent, curiosity turning to trepidation. We ventured out, only to be met with a sight that would forever be etched in my memory. The once proud Assyrian army lay broken, their soldiers lifeless, struck down by an unseen force. It was a scene straight out of Scripture, a tangible reminder of God's awesome power. 
News of the miracle spread like wildfire. Relief washed over the city, followed by a surge of joyous celebration. Jerusalem had been saved, not by our swords or our cunning, but by the mighty hand of God. This wasn't just a victory. It was a profound act of faith, a testament to the power of prayer, and a stark reminder that even in our darkest hour, we are never truly alone. Thank you for joining me on this journey through my life and reign. If you found this story inspiring, please like this video and share it with others who might need a dose of faith and resilience today. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to Celestial Chronicles for more stories of inspiration and divine intervention. Until next time, stay blessed and keep seeking the celestial.